You Booked It, episode 157. What's going on, everyone? Thank you for joining me today on You Booked It, the number one podcast where you learn how to create a successful entertainment career. Every episode is a masterclass on how to move your career forward. And if you want even more, head over to YouBookedItPodcast.com and join the email community where we dig deep into what you can be doing right now to help book that next gig. And now, let's do this. Alrighty, let's get started. I am excited to introduce my guest today, Jessica Lee Golden. Are you ready for this, Jessica? I am so ready. All right. Jessica has been seen in many shows on The Great White Way, but is best known for her portrayal of Val in the Broadway revival of A Chorus Line. She is featured in the documentary film Every Little Step about the audition and casting process for the show. Jessica also closed the show playing the lead role of Cassie in the final performance. Broadway credits include A Chorus Line, Finding Neverland, Tuck Everlasting, and Hello Dolly. Off-Broadway includes On the Town. Tours include Fosse, and regionally she's been seen in Guys and Dolls, Young Frankenstein, Chicago, Sweet Charity, Crazy for You, South Pacific, and Damn Yankees. Jessica was also seen as Lucy in Smash on NBC. Jessica, that is a quick intro of who you are and what you've done, but why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself, fill in the gaps, and a little bit more about what you do as a professional in the entertainment industry. So thank you so much for having me. I am originally from Parsippany, New Jersey. I'm currently living in Brooklyn, New York, and I'm a Broadway actor. I got my start uh, in dance when I was three. And I was also a competitive gymnast for a few years. And then I fell in love with musical theater at the age of 10. I was with New Jersey Ballet Company for a few years. I went to the Performing Arts High School in New York. I got my equity card and started working in theater. And then I made my Broadway debut in A Chorus Line. And I've been doing it ever since. Very cool. I also did gymnastics as a child. I did, I would, sad story. I, I guess you would call it bullying now, but I, I was just, people weren't very nice. And I was, because I was really young and I was getting better. Mm -hmm. And 13 year old boys weren't very nice to me. That's oh well. a shame. It is what it is. And then I discovered dance and the whole theater thing, not until much later in life. I did, I went off and did sports. And then it wasn't until I was 17 and a half years old before I started dancing, which is crazy. I uh, think that's so cool that I, so many boys have the same story that they start late and then are amazing at it. I think that's so cool. Yeah, it's fun. I guess my whole life I trained physically on coordination yeah. and things like that. And it just transferred over, which is way better. I much prefer singing and dancing than playing sports. Even though I, I love sports it. Too. <laughs> and it was super cool. It's super cool that you did gymnastics too. Very cool. Yeah, right on. Let's get into this first section here. And Jessica, look, I am a sucker for a good quote. What is your favorite quote you'd like to share with everyone? I am a sucker for a good quote too. So my favorite quote is by Marianne Williamson. It's from A Return to Love, Reflections on the Principles of A Course in Miracles. And it goes like this. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, and talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. What an empowering quote. Right? Fantastic. Yes. And yeah. I like that because it, it at first I almost feels like it's playing devil's advocate a bit based on the way we view ourselves and going through this, you know, putting ourselves out there. But so amazing as yeah. it develops. Wow, what a good quote. It's an awesome quote. 
Yeah. Can you expand a little bit on how that has worked its way into your career? Sure. So this quote, I read a lot and I actually have it printed out and I, it's in a frame on my dressing room station and Mm. it just, it helps me get out of my own way. Whenever I feel that fear creep in that I'm not enough or that I could fail, or I start thinking, you know what, I just shouldn't even try. Or whenever I ask myself, who am I to step forward and dance this way? Or who am I to want this part? Who am I to star in the show? Who am I to have these instincts to do things maybe differently than other people around me are doing? Who am I to have these big dreams? Or if I start feeling that thing when I start to stifle myself to fit in, or to Mm. be accepted or to be liked, I go back to this quote and I'm reminded that I was created uniquely as we all are. And so my life journey is not going to look like anyone else's. My life, my art, my love, it will not look like anyone else's journey. And that's beautiful. And that is my greatness. That's my light, my gift to the world. And I can trust that. And it helps me feel confident walking into auditions to embrace my power in a rehearsal room to feel courageous stepping onto stage and it just frees me to be bold in staying true to my dreams which hopefully inspires other people to do the same oh that's so good i i just say everyone just rewind that whole little section from the quote to now (laughs) listen to that again so good thank you so much for sharing that absolutely Yeah. And let's get into this next section here. And Jessica, of course, you are an entertainer. I'm an entertainer. And I think that you'd agree that this industry can be one of the most subjective, brutally honest, personally emotional industries in existence. Mm. And you know, as well as I, That in order to create and have a successful career in this industry, like you're having now, takes a lot of dedication and hard work. And while, yeah, there is an outrageous amount of fun and excitement doing what (laughs) we do, there are also our fair share of obstacles, challenges, and failures we are going to experience and we're going to have to move forward through. Mm -hmm. So tell us, what is one key challenge, obstacle, or failure you've experienced in your career? And how did you come out the other side better? because of it. So my greatest challenge and obstacle that I had in my career and in my life was my addiction to drugs and alcohol. Hmm. Um, For a long time, I thought I was okay. And I really had fooled myself into thinking that I was navigating through life really well. And especially that I was successfully keeping it all separate from my performing. I kind of felt like that my love for what I do was so precious and special that it was going to be safe somehow from the other side of me. And I just, I felt like I had control over it and that so long as I was doing it on downtime, I was okay. And that's the thing about addiction and alcohol. It's so sneaky. (laughs) It tricks you and it wants you to believe that it's okay because it's after the show where I'm with my friends or I have to, because we're celebrating or I have to numb because I feel anxiety, which we have a lot of in our career, or I'm just bored and it's fun. And it's the problem that pretends to be the solution. And on the outside, it appeared for a long time that I was successful and that I was happy, where in reality, I was suffering and I was so depressed. It's such an isolating disease. My light was just slowly dimming and all the lines were blurring and my addiction was completely stifling my voice, my gifts. I was slowly lost. I just lost all of my passion for what I do. And suddenly just nothing mattered. And it's wild that my rock bottom moment of realizing that I needed to change my life and everyone's is different, but mine was not the hurt and the pain that I caused my family or losing my friends. It was the moment of realizing that every ounce of joy and passion that I felt when I was on stage, when I was dancing was gone. And it shows you how kind of flipped my priorities were because now, you know, my family, my friends, my community are everything to me and performing and what I do is just the cherry on top. But at that point, the thing keeping me together, the thing that was keeping me holding on was performing and the joy of doing what I love. And when that joy died, I realized, I got really scared and I realized, oh, wow, this is it. This is the closest thing I could ever feel to death. It just felt like I was gone. I remember dancing and looking at myself in the mirror and just seeing a ghost. 
And it was then that I realized I needed to change my life. So I called my mom and I said, you know what, it's time. <laughs> and she was incredible. And my family was so supportive. And I decided to go to rehab to an all women's program, which was the best decision that I ever made. And I stayed for two months. I stayed as long as they would keep me. And I met the most amazing women I'll probably ever meet. And I worked really intensely, had therapy every day. I remember going in hoping that I could get back to the way that I felt before it all started, which was probably around 17 or 18 years old. And I never thought that I would come out feeling better than I could have ever dreamed. And I knew myself in a way that I just never did before. Sobriety absolutely changed my life, which in effect changed me as a performer, stepping back out onto stage for the first time and feeling everything, feeling the nerves, feeling the joy, just feeling the passion again and looking in the mirror and feeling the pride of having faced all of that and come out the other side and knowing who I was. It was and still is just the best thing that I've ever done. It is my greatest accomplishment. Sobriety is my greatest gift to the world because it makes me the best daughter, the best sister, aunt, the best girlfriend, the best friend, which in turn makes me the best performer that I could possibly be. And I'm sharing this because I know that there are a lot of people who have gone through this or are going through this. And I'm here to say, you know, I'm going to be eight years sober January 4th. And it is possible. And it is so beautiful to let go and come out the other side. And the life that is waiting for you is truly beyond your wildest dreams. It isn't easy, but it is worth it. Thank you so much for all of that. Yeah. And it's so important to say that and to share that with everyone because you're right there are a lot of people going through that yeah and to hear people like you that have been there done that at you know working at some of the highest levels of this entire industry and having to navigate that and still go look you can still have it all you can mm -hmm. reclaim all of your life back and make it better absolutely and i always think i like talking about it i like sharing my experience because when I was coming up and I was new to the industry, I sometimes wish I had that figure, especially a strong female figure doing it in the heat of it that was sober that I could look to and say, okay, she's doing it. So I will always speak out about it and hope to inspire, even if I help only one person. Brilliant. Thank yeah. you. Very well said. All of it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And let's move on to a time that I like to call your spotlight moment. That <laughs> one moment in time you realized, yes, I am going to be an entertainer for a living. Or maybe it was, yes, this is what I need to be doing as an entertainer. Tell us about that. Okay, so I was at the Professional Performing Arts School, which is called PPAS on 48th Street between 8th and 9th, and it was my sophomore year. They were doing Sweet Charity for the Musical, which at the Performing Arts High School is like, of course, the biggest thing and what everyone was there for. And yeah. I was asked by the director, my teacher, Stephen Kaplan, who's my favorite teacher of all time, to audition for Charity. Um, now a senior had always been cast as the lead, so I didn't think I had any shot at getting it. So I auditioned and I ended up getting the part oh, and cool. I, I was very cool. And I thought, oh no, cause everyone was not happy <laughs> that mm -hmm. a sophomore was playing the lead role. So I felt a lot of pressure and I felt that I had a lot to prove, but it was such a dream of mine. And I was so in love with everything Fosse and my idol was Gwen Verdon. So I just decided to put my head down and work so hard. I, I worked every single moment I had. I ran out my VHS tape that I had of Shirley MacLaine doing the movie. <laughs> and I just remember sweating and doing every number again and again and just diving into all of the scene work like it was the Bible to me. I remember hiding my script underneath my textbooks and learning all of my lines in classes that I shouldn't have been learning all my lines in. But And I, I got to opening night. I got to the opening night performance and I had worked so hard and rehearsed so much that I was 
able to just let everything go. And it was the first time that I experienced getting lost in a show and in this character. And it was like an outer body religious experience at that young age. I'm still so grateful that I had that moment. And I just thought, this is what I have to do forever. Because it was like, nothing I had ever felt before, just being completely lost in the show. Getting to experience that and convey it to the audience, was it was just magic. And the moment really cemented the work ethic I took with me through my professional career. Oh, that is such a good moment. And you're right. That kind of getting lost, that being one with the show or your character is, I don't... It's it's everything. I know exactly it's what magic. You're talking about. Yeah. Exactly, but it's one of those things that you can never really put it into words. Yeah. It's you but oh, when you get that experience, when you if you've had that feeling, you know that feeling. Yeah. And <laughs> I hope everyone listening to this gets to experience that someday if you haven't already because it is something very special. It really is. Great. And let's piggyback on that real quick and talk about your number one booked it moment. Walk us through that day, the auditions and callbacks, if they happen to be a part of it. Okay. What was going on in your life? And what about that moment makes it your favorite booked it moment? Okay, so my number one booked it moment is getting the call that I'd be playing Val in the Broadway revival of A Chorus Line. Yes. I, yeah, it was incredible. I had tried to get into this audition for the show for a full year because they held the auditions for a year. And I was with an agent at the time who said I was too young and he couldn't get me in for it. So for a year, I stood by. And the day after my contract was up with my agent, I went on to backstage.com and saw that there was an open call for a chorus line. So I went. That happened to be the final open call for the show. And I remember just being ecstatic that I could even audition and then floored that I was getting callbacks. So I auditioned for a week and that whole week I was getting called back in and they asked me to prepare to read a few different roles because they were looking at me for a cover. So I think I was reading Judy and Christine, BB and Val, but every time I went in, the director, Bob Avian kept saying to me, do Val one more time. Well, do Val one more time. So I came to the final callback and the callbacks were on stage at the Broadhurst. And I was freaking out because we were on a Broadway stage and there were cameras everywhere because they were filming the documentary Every Little Step on top of it all. And so there I was on stage with my idols, Charlotte Dembois, Diedrich Goodwin, Ken Allen. Oh my God, Rochelle Rack, just the people I idolized my whole life. And I was terrified, but I danced. <laughs> I was actually very sick for my final callback. I had strep throat. And I so I sang best I could. And then I took the bus back home to Jersey. And I remember just sitting on my bed and I just started crying because I was so relieved it was over. <laughs> but also I was just so proud that I made it that far. And then I got the call. And I couldn't believe when they said that I'd be playing Val because oh there, there I was thinking they were considered I couldn't believe they were considering me for a cover so then right. for them to say you're playing Val it was like just tunnel vision pure shock I couldn't believe in a million years that they were even considering me and so to find out I was making my Broadway debut in the role I had always dreamed of playing it was just the stars aligned in that moment and I still feel so lucky for it. I was 19, and it was all of my dreams coming true in one phone call. Wow, that is so great. And can you talk a little bit about actually getting into rehearsals and then opening? Sure. So we rehearsed at in New York. We rehearsed in New York downtown. 890 Broadway, which is where they rehearsed the original production in 1975. So that was really cool, cool to be in that same room doing it where they had created it. It's very awesome. And we rehearsed for about two months before we went out of town to San Francisco. We did the show there for two months before coming to Broadway. And it's funny thinking about it now. I am a performer who I'm a grower, not a shower. Like I get into rehearsals and I'm pretty rough around the edges 
throughout. Like I, I find my way into a character, into a performance, and then I'm where I want to be by previews and opening night. And at that time, hmm. I didn't really know that because it was one of my first big jobs and the pressure was on. And I remember in rehearsals, not feeling like I got a lot of laughs or anything. And so I'm doing the Val monologue and I'm doing the number and I just, I didn't, it didn't feel good. And, and then I got an audience in San Francisco and I just remember working on it day and night. Every line in the monologue I felt was so important and should land. And I worked on it and worked on it until I had the audience laughing at everything I said. It was oh, my goal. Cool. And, and so by opening night, I was where I w wanted to be when I started. And uh, it's a cool thing to know that now, but it was really... I'll, I'll never have another moment like that show for any dancer. It's like Cats or West Side Story. It is so special. And I had such an incredible experience doing that show that anytime I'm asked to do it now, I say, yes, if I'm free, I will be there because it just, it's the only show where I can be myself on stage. And and it's easier said than done to reveal so much of who you actually are standing on stage naked instead of hiding behind a character. It's you get to bring all of the life experience to it. Yeah, so cool. Thanks for delving in and sharing a bit. Yeah. Yeah. And let's take a moment to talk about the present. What yeah. projects are you working on now? What are you looking forward to? And Hey, it's a weird time, right? We yeah. are amidst this global pandemic. How do you see the entertainment industry moving forward in the next couple of years? Yeah. So right now, currently, I'm focusing on taking class, creating and collaborating whenever I can. I'm never really satisfied and I'm always competing with myself. So I'm just using this time to improve and hone my craft any way that I can. And I'm using this time to get back to why I started doing this in the first place, dancing for the love of it, performing whenever and wherever I can for no money, of course, at the moment, <laughs> but <Right>. because <laughs> it's the thing that makes me feel the most alive. And mm. it's my, it's the only way I know to communicate it best. It's the best way I know to communicate with the world. Right before the pandemic hit, I found out that I would be playing a role that I really wanted in a show that I've been dying to do. And unfortunately, it hasn't been announced yet. So I'm not allowed to say what it is, but I am beyond grateful and excited to have something to look forward to. And I, I really can't wait to be a part of it. Oh, uh, so cool. I, I know. It's very cool. I wish I could say what it was, but I, it really is like dream part and it's going to be a lot of fun. I think this time is going to light people on fire to create. And I think a lot of very cool things are going to come out of this. And I think it's going to remind people how special and essential what we do as artists is. I'm hoping to see a lot of performance on film. And I do hope that theaters, especially regional theaters, will come back swiftly under the right safety guidelines. And when it all is lifted and we can get back, I really think just look out because once we are back in full force, I have full faith that Broadway will be back and better than ever. I am inclined to agree with you as well. I think it's going to be this massive surge of creativity and yeah. works. Uh, but also, there's going to be an outrageous amount of opportunity for people. I know there's a lot of younger, up-and-coming people that are freaking out. You know, they're, they're graduating sure. from these training programs. They're like, there's not an industry to go into right now. Right. And that's scary, right? Yeah. But I say, hold on, keep training. And there's going to be so much work available coming up, I think. Absolutely. Uh, because there's going to be so many things being produced. But also... During this time, there's a lot of people that are simply leaving the industry, which is also right. making more space for you because of this just crazy, weird situation that we're in. So Absolutely. I would say to all those aspiring actors and performers out there, keep up the grind, keep training, and keep staying ready. Yes. It's going to be amazing. Yes, I agree. Yeah, I was even speaking with, I've mentioned him a few times on this, Benjamin Simpson. He was on the show, I can't remember which episode, but he is a two-time Tony Award winning producer. Mm -hmm. And he was saying, okay, so you just said there's lots of people creating things. We all know people are creating things, right? Because right. that's our little world. Right. But 
there's the production side of it as well. And him as a producer was saying, look, it took every single ounce of time in the day for me just to run the day to day of my business. Right. Of being a producer. Now he's like, now I have the time to listen to the composers, the new composers, read the scripts, exactly. read all of this great content. So it's not just people creating, it's also the people that have the connections and the know-how and the finances to make these projects and create this and make these creative things a reality. It's exactly. happening everywhere. It's going to be exactly. so cool. Exactly. And I just encourage, if they're Exactly. We have the time now. So if there was ever that nugget in your mind of what if I did this or what if I could make that happen now mm. with the, especially with the power of social media and everyone has a camera, everyone, you can rent a studio and put anything on film, do it. Just say yes. Don't judge it or worry about what anyone is going to think of it. That's not your job. Get If there is that morsel of that thought in you of, I feel this is a dream of mine and I feel like I could do this, just do it. 100%. Absolutely. And it is time to move into one of my favorite sections of the interview. I call it the Grease Lightning Round. Yes. I am going to ask you a handful of questions. I want you to answer them as quickly and concisely as possible, one after another. Are you ready? I am ready. Beautiful. First question. What was the one thing holding you back from committing to a career as an entertainer? I really didn't have anything holding me back. My inner monologue has always been, go for it, go full out, put all you've got into it. And if you're going to fall, I want to fall hard. I want to fall flat on my face. And I also believe in having nothing to fall back on. Brilliant. Second question. What is the best piece of advice you have ever received? It is from my friend, now Tony nominee, Daniel J. Watts. I was struggling making a very hard decision about a show. And he said to me, if you stay true to your gut and stay true to your integrity, no matter what, I promise you amazing things will happen. Brilliant advice. Third question, what is something that is working for you right now? Or if you'd like to go pre-COVID, what was working for you before our industry went on pause? Okay, this might sound very silly, but wearing dance wear. Someone threw me shade <laughs> recently and said, oh, wow, you're wearing a leotard, like as though this was some fossil, right? Yeah. And I said, yes, because I'm not a tennis player. I'm a dancer. It changes the way that I dance. I'm better for it. I am a big believer in bring back dance wear. Sorry, Lululemon. <laughs> <laughs> It's true. I mean, you got to look the part, right? That's it. I bl And all of my idols dressed that way. They wore leotards and tights and you could see their bodies. Yeah. Look the part, feel the part, right? That's it. There we go. And the fourth question, what is your best resource? Whether that is a book, a movie, a YouTube video, a podcast, maybe a piece of technology that you found is helping your career right now. I really love anything by Brene Brown. She is just beyond inspirational for me. Brilliant. And she has come up quite a few times speaking has to different she? guests. Yes, she sure has. I'm not has. surprised. Yeah, she's great. Yeah. And the fifth question, if you had to start your career from scratch, but you still had all the knowledge and experience you've collected from your career in this industry, what would you do or not do? Would you do anything differently or would you keep it the same? I thought about this one a lot. I would have said no to the things that I felt in my gut I wasn't meant for instead of saying yes out of fear for how it would look if I didn't. Very well said. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's great life advice for yeah. sure. Yeah. And the last question, what is the golden nugget knowledge drop you've learned from your successful career in this industry you'd like to leave with our listeners? What is meant for you will never pass you by. Keep your head down, work hard, and stay ready. Yes. And to wrap up this interview, Jessica, it is time to give yourself a plug. Where can we find you? How do our listeners connect with you? Is there anything you want to promote? You can find me on Instagram at Jessica Lee Golden. Boom. And for everyone listening out there, I have put the link 
of Jessica's Instagram account into the description of this episode so you can just easily get linked straight to her. And also, be sure to share this podcast with your fellow entertainers, coaches, teachers, arts and entertainment educators, and anyone you know aspiring to create a career in this industry. You Booked It is the number one resource of expertise on how to actually create a successful entertainment career. Case in point, everything Jessica just talked about in today's episode. Amazing insight, actionable insight even. So if you enjoyed this episode, please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss tomorrow's guest. Jessica, thank you so, so much for being here. So glad we got connected. Such a pleasure to have you on. Thank you. The pleasure was mine. Thank you so much for joining us today. Don't miss an episode. I have a new guest seven days a week. Every guest drops more value and insight than any other resource out there. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you enjoyed this episode, we'd love to hear from you. Leave us a rating and review. Also, be sure to head over to youbookedatpodcast.com and join our free email community where we dig deep into a continually growing resource of truly actionable things you can be doing right now to help you advance your entertainment career. All the best to you. We'll see you tomorrow.